Hello everybody. We've been working with measuring angles in our current couple of lessons and what we're going to work on right now is something involving angle measures. We're going to look at the angle addition postulate. All right, actually a little something else as well. In the lesson goals, what we're going to do is we're first going to use the angle addition postulate in order to find unknown angle measures. And then while we're at it, we're going to look at angle bisectors, and we're going to look at how you use angle bisectors to also find unknown angle measures. The idea, of course, being that we're finding a lot of unknown angle measures. So let's begin the lesson by describing the angle addition postulate so you know what it is I'm referring to. And I will do that by, re by reminding you of what something very similar is, something called the segment addition postulate that you'll learn a couple of sections back in the text. Now, the segment addition postulate was this. It was a situation where you had a line segment, such as the segment RS, and then you placed a point somewhere between R and S, so this point Z. And whenever you place that point between the endpoints of a segment, what it does is it creates two smaller segments, and the sum of the lengths of those smaller segments is equal to the length of the original line segment RS. Or in other words, this equation is true. The distance from R to S equals the distance from R to Z plus the distance from Z to S. Make sense? Okay, so as I said, a very similar thing is going to happen with the angle addition postulate. Although the phrasing is going to be slightly different because whenever you're talking about an angle, you can't put a point between the ends of an angle because an angle doesn't have ends, but it does have sides. And what we say we can do with an angle is we can place a point in the interior of the angle, kind of like we place point Z between the endpoints of a segment. So let's say we place this point P here, and it's in the interior of the angle. Now, quick, this is important. Sounds obvious, but it's worth showing to you. The interior of an angle is the space, if you will, between the sides of an angle, and so it would be this space that I'm going to highlight here. Okay, all of that's the interior of the angle, and anything that's not between the two sides of an angle is called the exterior of the angle. And for the angle addition postulate to work, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and place a point that's in the interior of an angle. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to draw a ray from the vertex of the angle through that point, so this ray BP. Now what happens when you draw that ray BP in the interior of the original angle is that it creates a situation where you have three angles. And there, two of them are what are called adjacent angles. Okay. Now, let me talk about the angles that are there that I can refer to the adjacent angle thing. We've got this angle ABP. We've got angle PBC. And we've got angle ABC. And what I mean by adjacent angles are any two angles that share a common side and vertex. So angle ABP and angle PBC both share the vertex uh, B that you see there, as well as the side ray BP, which makes angle ABP and angle PBC adjacent angles. And just as when you place the point between the endpoints of a segment, the two smaller segments created, their distances equal the distance from the between the endpoints of the segment. Well, the measures of the two angles created by this ray in the interior of the angle, the sum of those measures has to equal the sum of the whole, if you will. So this equation has to be true. The measure of angle ABC, the entire angle, has to equal the sum of the measures of the two parts, ABP and PBC. Excellent. That's what the angle addition postulate is. Let's use it to find some unknown angle measures, which was the point of this video so far, right? Now let's put the angle addition postulate into action. You see here a situation where it says use the given angle measure in order to find the indicated values. And this is part A of two parts in this example. It wants us to find the measure of angle, well, sorry, not find, but it says that the measure of angle MAR is 124 degrees. Now, you see this angle MAR right there, and you also see this ray AC that divides that angle into two smaller but adjacent angles with one another. Now, the way we're going to go about finding the value of X is this, all right? 
Now, the x is part of the angle measures of each of those two smaller angles. And according to the angle addition postulate, whenever you've got that ray in the middle, or sorry, in the interior of a larger angle, it's going to divide it into two angles that you can add together to get the larger one, correct? So, we can say that the angle, the measure of angle MAR, the largest one, equals the measure of angle MAC plus the measure of angle CAR. Let me write that out. All right, the measure of the large angle, MAR, equals the sum of the measures of the two smaller angles, MAC, boom, and CAR, boom. All right, now what we're going to do is simply this. We're given uh, an expression to represent the measures of each of those angles, and all we're going to do is we're going to substitute those expressions in place of the angle measures in our equation. So we'll plug in 124 right here for the measure of angle MAC. Oops, I put that on place, I suppose. Over here, let's try that instead. And then I'll go ahead and put in 6x minus 11 for the measure angle MAC. And I'll substitute 4x minus 25 in place of the measure angle CAR. Does that substitution make sense? All right, hope so. Then the rest of this is algebra. On the right side of the equation, we're going to have a little bit of simplifying to do in order to solve. Now, I want you to notice that even though there are parentheses here, the parentheses really don't mean anything in this case because, first of all, there's not like terms in the parentheses, nothing to do there, and there's only an addition sign between them, and so if we were even to distribute anything, it would be a positive one. Basically, whenever you have two parentheses with an addition sign between them, the parentheses really aren't doing anything for you. You can kind of ignore them in this case. So I can just go ahead and combine my like terms. 6x plus 4x is 10x. Negative 11 plus negative 25 is negative 36. And so we have 160. If we add 36 to both sides, equals 10x. And x, then, is equal to 16. All right, so not so bad, right, using the angle addition postulate. Now, I'm going to take this one step further because often you're given a problem just like this one where you're supposed to find the measure, uh, sorry, the value of a variable using the angle addition postulate. Often you're, tried to find, you're told to find some of the actual missing angle measures. So let's do that. Same picture, same measurements, but I've, tried, I've changed what we're trying to find. Instead of finding the value of x, I want us to find the measures of angles MAC and CAR. Although this is piggybacking on the last problem, since I didn't change any of these measures, that's going to help us quite a lot. Uh, I keep not pointing where I want to, any of these measures. So we've already determined that the value of x is 16, haven't we? And once we've figured out the value of x for the problem, all we have to do is substitute that value into each of these angle measures. Now watch the way I'm labeling my results here. The measure of angle MAC is going to be equal to 6 times 16 minus 11. Whoops, don't really need that princess. And so 6 times 6 is 96. 96 minus 11 is 85 degrees. And the measure of an angle always needs to be in degrees, at least until you get to other um, math courses a little bit later on, where you might measure in radians or something. Don't worry about that right now. Then the measure of angle CAR would be equal to 4 times 16 minus 25. Now, 4 times 16 is 64. 64 minus 25 is 39 degrees. And then one last thing here. It turns out to be pretty easy to check your answers whenever you have an angle addition postulate question because all I've got to do is make sure that these two angle measures that I got right here really do add up to the original one and my double check, I can say that 85 plus 39 is 124, and that checks out with the original thing, right? So we got our solution here, the measure of angle MAC, the measure of angle CAR, and for part A, the value of X. All right, we're going to switch our focus now. We're going to talk about something that the way it's going to be solved will be similar to that of an angle bisector but it's going to be different as well. And the thing I want to talk about are what are called angle bisectors. Now, you might recall that a segment bisector 
is a line or a ray or a point or a line segment or a plane that divides a segment into two congruent segments. Well, an angle bisector is a ray or a line sometimes or a line segment or a plane. It can be any of those things. It can't be a point. But it's anything that divides an angle into two congruent angles. And here we're told in the directions that ray BD bisects angle ABC. Let me label some things on the diagram here. One thing that you ought to be able to do in a diagram is label whenever two angles are congruent to one another. And the way that you label the angles are congruent is by using a little arc like that. Those arcs mean that those angles are congruent. And how do I know that they're congruent? Because this ray bisects the angle ABC. And the word bisects literally means cut in half, essentially. So what we're going to do then is this. We're going to work on this premise that since ray BD bisects angle ABC, then angle ABD has to be congruent to angle CBD. Right? The two smaller angles are congruent whenever the larger angle is bisected. And if two angles are congruent, their measures are always equal. So we could say that the measure of angle ABD is equal to the measure of angle CBD. All right, now let's just make sure you understand what an angle bisector does. Divides an angle in half. Now let's go ahead and work on a problem that says to find the measure of angle ABC, the larger angle in the picture, if the measure of angle DBA right here is 37 degrees. Now we've already done a little bit of labeling here in the picture. We've already, and we're now saying that the measure of angle DBA is 37 degrees. Well, if these two angles are equal to one another, two smaller ones, then doesn't that mean that this is 37 degrees as well? Now, there's two ways of using that, all right? What I would like to do is approach this problem from this perspective, and then I'll show you how it could have been done with angle addition postulate. Let's just say that since we have an angle bisector there, you know that that means that each of these two smaller angles is half of the measure of the larger angle, correct? Now, conversely, couldn't you say that the measure of the larger angle is equal to twice the measure of the smaller angles? So, I could have just said that the measure of angle ABC is equal to twice either the measure of angle DBA or the measure of angle CBD. I'll just go with DBA because that's what's written right here, but there was no real reason I had to choose that over the other. And so we can say it's equal to twice 37 degrees, and that's going to give you 74 degrees. Now, couldn't we have just as easily used the angle addition postulate and said that the sum of these two angles equals the sum of the larger angle? Yes, but there are instances where with angle bisectors, it's not possible to add the two smaller ones up to the larger one because of the information that's given. So it was good for you to realize that the larger angle had to be twice the measure of one of the smaller angles. Great. Now let's work a problem like this, but with variables. You see the same picture, though I've changed the information. This is no longer a 37 degree angle. Although what is constant here is that you still have ray BD bisecting the angle ABC. All right, so an angle bisector, meaning that these two angles are still going to be congruent to one another. Now what it's telling us to do is to find the measure of the larger angle, largest angle ABC, if the measure of angle DBA is, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. We are not looking at the right problem. Let me change that. Sorry, you were wondering why I said the information was different. Here we go. We're going to try to find the measure of angle ABD if the measure of the larger angle ABC is 12x plus 16 degrees and the measure of the other small angle DBC is 4x plus 28. All right, now let me remark what I just marked a second ago. The angle bisector with the two congruent angles. And let me label the measures that are given. The measure of this big angle ABC, 12x plus 16 degrees. And the measure of this smaller angle, CBD or DBC, is 4x plus 28 degrees, right? Okay, now here's going to be the strategy. Essentially, we can find the measure of angle ABD if we can find the measure of either of the other two angles. So 
I'm going to use the variable here, or I'm going to use these two measures to find the value of x, and then using that, I can find either the measure of angle ABC or DBC. That'll help me find ABD. Now, here's the equation. Remember that the larger angle is twice the measure of either of these smaller angles when you have a bisector only that works. And so we can make this equation that the measure of angle ABC equals twice the measure of angle DBC. And then substitute. Okay, there's a the measure of angle ABC. There's a the measure of angle DBC. We've got a little bit of algebra to do here. Nothing we could do on the left side of the equation to begin, but we can take this right side and use the distributive property and get 8x plus 56. Then we'll subtract 8x from both sides. And we'll subtract 16 from both sides. And we've got the value of x. Now, that's not what the problem asked for, the value of x, but it is going to help us find the value of the me angle measure that we're looking for. We're looking for ABD's measure. It's the same as DBC's measure. So, final step is this, just substitute. The measure of angle ABD is equal to 4 times 10 plus 28, which is 40 plus 28, or 68 degrees. All right, and so then see if that makes sense. If this was 68, this was 68 then, and 12 times 10 is 120, 120 plus 16 is 136, and that is twice 68. So it checks out. You ought to know how to use the angle addition postulate, and you ought to know how to use angle bisectors to find missing angle measures. Now, thanks for your attention, guys. See you next time.